Today, I've got a really awesome tip for you. I'm gonna show you how to make light rays inside of Lightroom. Basically, we're gonna go from this to this, and it's really easy to do. You just gotta know how. Now, while the tip is to show you how to make these light rays, it's really not about the light rays at all. What I want you to take away from today's video is actually how we're making the light rays, the technique that we're using to make the light rays. Because if you know and understand this technique, you can actually use and apply this trick to a lot of different things when editing a photograph. So don't get hung up on the fact that this is light rays tip or technique. It's not about that, but it just so happens that it works perfectly for light rays as well. So couple of things that you need to know before we jump into making the light rays, the main trick to making the light rays. There are a couple of little things that you should know. So let's jump into those little things, show you exactly what it is I'm talking about, and then I'll show you how to make these rays. So number one, we're going to be using the adjustment brush today. If you don't know where your adjustment brush is, it's just above the basics panel. If you click on the adjustment brush, it'll activate it. Any adjustments, because you might have panels that are open, um, I don't right now. All of my panels are closed. But if you have other panels like basics or tone curve or any of that stuff open, it's important to know that anything below the word basic has nothing at all to do with the adjustment brush. And in fact, I recommend that you go to all of these panels here, basic, tone curve, HSL, whatever, and you actually close all of those so that you're not confused. That's the first thing. So we're going to open up the adjustment brush. Now, the next thing we're going to need to do is control our brush. We're going to need to be able to have a very tiny little brush and a little bit larger brush. And in order to make this less confusing where you have to keep going back and changing the settings every single time, there's a little keyboard shortcut that you should probably know that will allow you to switch between one brush and another brush. And it's the forward slash key. Every time I hit the forward slash key, I can switch between a brush. So if you look down below at the bottom of the adjustment brush panel, you'll see some brush settings here. You'll see A, B, and erase. And every time I hit the forward slash button, you'll see the A, B light up switch. So right now it's on A. If I hit forward slash again, it's on B, A, B, A, B, and I can just keep going back and forth. So the first thing we need to do is set up our A brush. So I'm going to choose the A brush. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the size of this brush really, really tiny. You can do that by moving the size slider back and forth, or you can use uh, the bracket keys if you're more comfortable with that. But basically, I'm going to make the size of this like a pin drop, really, really small, like 0.1. I'm also going to leave the feathering at 100, flow at 100, density at 100. Auto mask, you can turn auto mask off. So now that the A brush is set, we're going to hit our forward slash or go to our B brush. And then what we're going to do is we're going to change the size of this. We're going to change this to maybe about, let's call it 16 and a half points or somewhere around there. 16.8 is fine on the size. And again, we're going to leave feathering at 100, flow at 100, density at 100 and auto mask, we're just going to leave that turned off. So I've set up my A brush and my B brush. And again, if I go between my forward slash, I can see here's A, B, A, B. And you can see how the brush goes from teeny tiny weeny all the way up to a little bit larger brush. Now that we've got that squared away, that we can easily switch between a small brush and a big brush, here's the next tip is how we can get an even transition from the small brush to the big brush by holding down our shift key. This is pretty awesome. Let me show you exactly how this works. I'm going to go over to exposure and I'm going to pull the exposure way up. Okay. It really doesn't matter. I'm going to pull it all the way up to four. Okay. So I've maxed out my exposure brightness. I'm going to start with the A brush. So make sure that your A is highlighted. And I'm just going to click by this tree one time. And as soon as I do, it's going to drop a little pin right there. 
Now what I want to do is go switch my brush to the B brush, which is the larger brush. And I'm going to go to the opposite side of the photo. And before I click anything, I'm going to hold my shift key down. This is the trick. You're going to hold shift and then you're going to click over here and watch the transition. You'll notice how it goes from this gradual, tiny little beam of light up to this thicker beam of light. And because we have the feathering at 100, it's a nice soft beam of light. I'm going to do that one more time. I'm going to hit the forward slash key. That's going to make my brush go to brush A, the little tiny brush. I'm going to click up here where my tree is. I'm going to hit the forward slash key one more time. That's going to bring up my large brush. I'm going to go to the opposite side of the picture, hold my shift key and click. And as soon as I do that, boom, just like that, I get this another really cool, crazy ray of light. Now, if you missed our previous video, we talked about how you could hover over the pin, hold your Alt or Option key down, and actually lower the opacity of an adjustment. We talked about that in the previous video. If you missed that, we'll leave a link to that video here in the, in the cards up above. But there's another way that you can do the opacity as well that we didn't talk about yesterday. Basically, if we go over here to next to the word effect, there's a little tiny arrow over here. If I click on that arrow, that drop down arrow, it's actually going to change the effect section to what's called an amount. And if I lower the amount, I can actually lower basically the opacity of that adjustment. I can control how strong that adjustment is. So that's the third thing. Now that we know what these three things are, let's put that into practical application to make these light beams. So I'm going to go over here, right click on that pin and delete it basically because I want to start all over. Okay. My brush settings are still set up. My A and B brushes are still set the way they were before. So I'm going to start with the A brush, the little tiny one. Now in this photograph, in this example, I had already made a light burst by lowering my aperture to F22. And that created this really cool burst of light coming through the trees. But I want to accentuate that burst throughout the entire picture. So I'm going to start with the little tiny brush and I'm going to click somewhere inside of this sunspot. And I want to follow the beams that are already here. So I'm going to just click somewhere here, hit my forward slash button so that I get the bigger brush and go just follow this beam of light down towards the bottom where I think it would fall. Hold shift and click and boom. Then I get that light beam and I'm just going to repeat this. So forward slash brings up my small brush. I'm going to go back into where the sun is. Click. Then hit forward slash again to bring up the large brush. Hold shift and boom. And I'm just going to keep doing this until I get all the rays. So you're just going. You're just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, holding shift, hitting your forward slash key, following these beams that are already here. Oh, this is already looking pretty awesome. All right, now that we've made all the rays, probably a little overkill, but I just wanted you to see what this does. Again, I'm going to go up to that little arrow next to the effects tab. I'm going to close this down so I get amount and I'm going to lower the amount of these beams because I don't want them to be so strong where they're they're really kind of unbelievable. Just just a little bit. So we can control that opacity. That looks pretty good. I mean, you can decide as the artist, you know, do you want an effect that's a little bit more aggressive or not aggressive? You know, if you're if we're talking about light beams here, you can decide whether or not those beams go in front of the trees or behind some of the trees. And, you know, you can always go to the eraser. For example, if I didn't want the beams going in front of this big tree right here, I could just go over to erase and I could knock those out. The beams are still going behind the tree. They're just not going in front of the tree. I could make my brush smaller and decide, you know what, I don't want the beams going in front in front of this tree either. That looks a little weird, but now the beams do go, you know, behind the tree. 
So that's up to you. That's your artistic decision. But again, this tip is not necessarily all about the beams. You can use this trick for a plethora of things. In particular, it works extremely well on light beams. So go ahead, give it a try. Hopefully you found this tip awesome. I know we're in love with it. If you haven't already done so, be sure to subscribe to our channel. And here's a couple other videos that you might not have seen. Go ahead and check those out. Leave us a like or comment there too. We appreciate your support. My name is Adam. This is Photo Nerds University. I'm out.